the old joke poses the question, who's buried in Grant's tomb? The answer, of course, is Ulysses S. Grant. But if you ask who invented Morse code, you may be surprised by the answer. In the 1830s, Samuel Morse is a struggling art professor at New York University. Troubled by financial failures, he turns his attention to science and sets out to build a device that can use electricity to send messages through a wire. In 1837, he gives a public demonstration of what he's developed. It's a very early version of the telegraph. Morse had the idea for some sort of electronic, instantaneous communication, but he was an artistic person and not a technical person. Morse doesn't know a great deal about electricity. His first telegraph is a complicated, cumbersome device that doesn't work very well. But it inspires a young man named Alfred Vail, who attends Morse's demonstration. Vail was 30 years old, and he's sort of searching for his place in the world. He'd gone to NYU and studied to be a minister, graduated during a very depressed time in American history, and minister positions weren't available. Um, so he was kind of looking for a purpose in life still. Vail is the son of a wealthy ironworks owner in Morristown, New Jersey. Impressed with the demonstration, he offers to help Morse improve his telegraph. More importantly, he convinces his father to finance the effort and provide him with access to the ironworks well-equipped workshop. For months, Vail works feverishly to make Morse's machine more efficient. Morse is busy with other commitments and rarely visits. Originally, Morse is expected to be a major part of those developments, but he ends up not really showing up at Speedwell for very much of the work. Alfred does almost all the technical development here. Vail virtually redesigns Morse's telegraph, making the machine more efficient and reliable. But he also makes an even more valuable contribution. Morse has created a complicated code system, allocating a number for every word. When a signal comes through, the operator has to flip through thousands of pages in a code book to find the number that matches the word. This system is slow and cumbersome, and Vale believes he can do better. Vale, in just a few months, comes up with the idea of a new way to send the message, and that would be letter by letter. Um, he actually has his assistant, William Baxter, help him. They go through newspapers and count letters to see which signal should be the shortest for the letters that are used the most. For example, they discover that the letter E is the most commonly used letter, so they give that the shortest signal, a dot. That's where the dot and dash alphabet that we associate with the telegraph is actually born. All this work results in a patent for the electromagnetic telegraph machine, which is issued on June 20th, 1840. The patent details both codes, but Vail's system proves easier to use and is quickly adopted. Why does Morse get the credit instead of Vail? Because Vail's name is not on the patent. In 1837, they sign a contract with Morse, the Vail family does, of that everything that will be developed will be developed under Morse's name. The Vales were in general in awe of Professor Morse, I think, uh, both because of his age being some 20 years older than Alfred Vail, and also because Morse was a fairly established person. When the telegraph takes off, Morse becomes rich and famous. But Alfred is not so lucky. Forced to sell his shares prior to the boom, he dies a poor man. Well, I think it is a sort of bittersweet story. Vail finds a lot of fulfillment. In the work, uh, it uses his mind and engages his imagination in a way that nothing else he has done before this did. I think if you take any sort of moral out of the story, it would be looking at Vale's ability to find fulfillment in the work without the recognition of the world.